time for the Intercontinental Championship, the pre-show uh, that we kind of all assumed wasn't going to be the pre-show. Wade Barrett against The Miz. And um, my major gripe with this match is something that I've mentioned and I will mention on virtually every part here, and that's the idea of rematches. They gave this match away. And there's yeah, really on, nothing on, going uh... right now. They could have had the two of these in a really good first match ever kind of a situation. And they decided instead to have like, what was it? The, uh, the triple threat match. And then they had the single well, at least match between triple threat three. isn't one-on-one, but they had like right after that, the week after that, they had Miz beat him in a non-title match. Right. And like, to me, the week after, to me, a lot of people try to argue and say, well, the reason that they had that is because Wade Barrett losing to the Miz means the Miz gets his title shot to me, have the title shot anyway. I'd rather see the two of them. Or they could have had him win. Like... Than to have Miz win it and do that. Because now I've already seen what they can do together. And now it doesn't feel as important to me. That's why it's on the pre-show now. But that's that's a shame. Because Wade Barrett and the Miz and oh, Intercontinental Championship. The reason it's on the pre-show is because Wade Barrett's involved in a WrestleMania match. <laughs> I mean, really. All three of those, uh, the title and the two wrestlers, all deserve much better than to just be thrown on the pre-show. And uh, when you look at a situation like Antonio Cesaro with his United States title that he doesn't have a match. He's not even on the card, not even the pre-show. Right. Why not throw him and Kofi Kingston together, two guys who don't have a match, as the pre-show for that? It would have worked a hell of a lot more, I think. And Wade Barrett and The Miz, they they had their match at WrestleMania itself. And I'm really annoyed about that. I don't think any of them do deserve to be on the main card. I mean, The Miz, especially since turning babyface, has been bland and boring yeah he has been barrett oh, he's been has been doing all bad. of nothing and cesaro oh, look at how he's been cesaro is one of the most unover guys they have and no matter how hard they've been pushing him and trying all these different things with him nobody gives a shit about him when you hear his music nobody cares but he's chris he's fucking he's he can put on an awesome match he does have that going for him you know what that's though, not what wrestlemania is about but if I know it's about being sports entertained. If WrestleMania is about only the people that matter and such, then why give the uh, Antonio Cesaro and Wade Barrett the two titles? If they don't matter in their minds, give them to somebody else. Especially yeah. Barrett. I mean, fuck. They don't, make, they don't make, give the, make the Ryback and Mark Henry match also for the championship if you want to do it. Or, uh, you know, include the, um, the U.S. title in the... Uh, I don't know. Make make, uh, make it the Jack Swagger is carrying the U.S. title and he's facing the world heavyweight champion and kind of like a title versus title situation like that. You know, That's if neat. if they do that kind of a thing, in my mind, it's you don't give a championship to somebody if you think that they don't matter. And uh, if they don't matter, then, yeah, they don't need to be on the card. And that's for the people like Yoshitatsu, not for the Miz, they, Wade Barrett, Antonio Cesaro, Kofi Kingston. They've, they've built the Intercontinental title up to the point where it doesn't matter because Wade Barrett, at the moment, they, they sort of fed him to an NXT guy, had that feud abruptly end. He was supposed to have that Intercontinental oh, um, shit. Where did tournament that guy go? <laughs> going on to find the new number one contender. Went back to NXT. That okay. didn't happen. Um then you know, and then he's just been kept off of television, and he had that sort of on again, off again thing going on with Sheamus, and that got put aside because they decided to throw Sheamus in a three-man tag team match against the Shield. Well, technically, Sheamus was still feuding with the Shield. He never stopped after Elimination Chamber. And yeah. it was sort of like the side thing for him. You know, it was like the yeah. only little thing that he he did while he was in limbo. Um, but it's it's done nothing for him, and and I have to agree with Peyton on this. I don't think him Miz deserve to be on the card at all, because neither guy has shown that they can do anything. Miz has, you know, his push to face was supposed to elevate him further and and cement him as a main eventer. It's pushed him further down the card, I believe, to the point where he's being used as enhancement talent. Well, that's because um, they. That's because they didn't capitalize say, when they should have. When he yeah. came out at Money in the Bank, they were fucking popping for him, and they should have had him turn babyface right then and there, but they wanted to stall for an extra two months or whatever. Arguably, he probably should have turned in 2011, but not... They keep him as his character, but go after the heel. 
Like I don't know what it is, but something about his promo style has changed yes. yeah. since he's turned face, and it's changed for the worst. It's yeah, because he, they he, don't want the baby faces to have any of that kind of a no mean, mean streak. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, edge, which because... is ridiculous because it's, like he was an his character was awesome in 2011, like when he was the champion, even after he lost the title, and and fans loved him. And he wasn't well, but, he wasn't even a babyface back then. That's two years ago. Well, look what was, happened with CM Punk. Nice. CM Punk turns babyface after he becomes incredibly popular, and his promo style changes as well. Yeah, but, now that but he's still, again, he's still he was still able to keep momentum, and he worked well as a face despite. Well, that's because Punk's so talented as as a talker. Mm. He can make any yeah, kind he of. Didn't, he didn't change as as much. Yeah, not as much. They, no, but he still changed. They, they he probably put up to... more of a fight against it, and that's what the difference is. I, I think the the WWE what they tended to do was. Because I, I've I've been hearing ramblings about the fact that Punk and Creative are not seeing eye to eye at the moment. That's a uh, job. Never are. Yeah, and <laughs> and a lot of it, if you've you've checked out the CM Punk uh, documentary, of his DVD, Best in the World. So good. Yeah, uh, about the fact that he every time he was given something by Creative, he sort of like tore it up in front of them, mm-hmm. or just threw it to the floor and did his own way of doing things. And uh, and a lot of it, they were saying, oh, it's got out of frustration. And he was like, well, you know, I believe everybody needs to basically talk if you can't say what you got to say on that mic and you're having someone write it for you it's not really going to work um but in terms of the the miz you know like one prominent person who turned from heel to face and didn't have to change his style as much was austin you know you don't have to lose what brought you to the dance and i think that's what the main problem is with the miz they they stripped him away right he, he's not the same talker he was a year or two ago. Yeah. And that's that's his biggest issue. And the same thing's going to happen if Dolph Ziggler turns babyface. The same exact thing's going to happen to him. And, but with with Austin though, it was it was a thing of the times. People were looking for that type of anti-hero. I don't know if that same type of character would catch on fire that way if that happened right now. Well, the anti-hero still works. Look at Eddie Guerrero, for instance, when he, he did that whole lie, cheat, and steal thing. That that was it, over five years ago, man. No, but in all semblance, he was a heel. Right, and the same thing can be said for Edge, or the same thing can be said for Jericho, for instance. Edge, when he turned face, was terrible. Come on, spear, spear, yeah. spear. <laughs> Edge support but he still, either. you know, he still managed to stay there as a main event, I and mean, he still managed to maintain the heat he had with the crowd. Now, if you look at the guys like the Miz, who just basically he, he transitioned over to to face, it was because a lot of it was forced. And the crowd, I, I kind of believe, rejected it because of that. You know, the, the fact they tried to pair him with Ric Flair and like, oh, look, he's got the, the figure, the figure four, four now. Yeah. yeah. It'll Whoa. only take him a couple of weeks before he figures out how to do it. But Yeah, and, and the <laughs> fact that they keep jump shotting him from feud to feud to feud to feud doesn't help either. And the same can be said for Barrett. He's being thrown into different directions, not knowing where they're going to place him. No, because they and don't care about him. Yeah, but they it's hurting his credibility. Yeah, it's they hurting... don't care about his credibility because they don't care about him. But then why put the title on him? I, I, I don't know. I'm only saying, why give someone a championship if you're not going to utilize them and that Maybe title? Maybe they already think it's like a cancer, so putting it on him will kill him faster. Okay, there we go. I disagree. I totally disagree. I think that the, one of the reasons they, they put off merging the United States Championship with the Intercontinental title once again is because they know that they're that you've got a mid-card roster that is literally bursting at the seams and these guys need these championships to go after uh, and the fact they put it on way barrett shows that they're going to do something with him and now it doesn't seem so much it seems like he's just holding it to the next guy and you, you can't do that. Purpose is and, and as tony stated you you should never ever have these two face one another prior to mania mm-hmm. It doesn't work. It, you've, you've given it off away from free TV and people just sitting there going, why Why am I going to watch this? Or if you're going to have the two face each other before WrestleMania, you need to do something to up the ante. You can't yeah. just have another match between the two of them because that is there's no point to it. I mean, if you have the two of them face each other and then uh, there's a gimmick match, different story. Yeah. Or and you know it's it's not that much of a difference when you go well the first one was a non-title match and this one's for the title it's not that much of a difference. I believe they don't think that it's going to be a blow off. They they're probably going to think that okay they may have two more pay per views with these two going at one another which I feel is going to be a big mistake. I think I, I think I their think mentality with this is going to be 
what they're going to do with a lot of things where they're going to say it's okay if it kind of sucks for WrestleMania because we'll have the two of them face each other at Extreme Rules and that that's that's the more important thing that they're right now with the Intercontinental Championship I think what we're going to see here is the Miz wins the Intercontinental title as a boost for the pre-show because then they're going to go, oh, we have a new champion going into WrestleMania. Oh, my God, you got to stay and watch the show because whatever, which in itself isn't a bad idea. I mean, um, you know, if you have a championship, take uh, uh, a new champion um, is crowned before WrestleMania on the pre-show, that in itself is a bigger push for the pre-show going into the pay-per-view than if you would have had that Brodus Clay match. But that's because they value the pre-show more than they do the two of these and the Intercontinental title. And um, I think that the same thing should have happened with Antonio Cesaro or whatever. Not necessarily meaning that he should have dropped the title to anybody like a Kofi Kingston I mentioned earlier, but they could have had him built up with somebody and they could have done that instead. But they're focused on other things and they obviously do not give two shits whatsoever for it. I don't understand why they can't kind of um, keep their focus on every little thing. It seems like they have a roster of like 15 creative members and they can only focus on three things at once or else they kill themselves from being stressed out. But uh, if I can do it, they should be able to with multiple people. So um, I, I would have to go with what we're going to see here is we're going to see the Miz win the Intercontinental title. I see Barrett for the win, no change. I see Barrett for the win with no change, too. I see. I mean, it's not on the live card, shit. so Miz is still <laughs> technically undefeated at WrestleMania. Well, that's yeah. that's a guarantee that the crowd is not going to really give a shit. Because they really haven't given them a reason to give a shit. They've got... Uh, They'll as, still be piling into the stadium. <laughs> as we mentioned, they have the watered-down Miz in uh, a feud with Wade Barrett, who's been going back and forth all over the place, and uh, an Intercontinental Championship that they haven't been promoting as well as they should. And it's a pre-show, which people don't really care too much about anyway. And what is this feud about? It's about, I have a movie and you do too, and we happen to just have a couple matches. So. <laughs> And the it's because of is... pre-shows like this that I'm not watching it. <laughs> the funny thing is, they could have easily put the title in a very um, precarious situation by having the title elevated in a ladder match and had like about four or five contenders go after it. It would have put Barrett in that desperate situation to retain and it would have made him look so much better. And not to mention, get, it would have got more people on the card. Of course. Like... Of course. That as well. And And it would have elevated so many people rather than just basically putting these two guys who no one gives a shit about in a match that no one cares about um, and then throwing a stipulation or, or, or throwing an, a title change just for the point to say, oh, look, this is important. <laughs> yeah. And Jester, that's any it, thoughts? Really. Um, I definitely see Barrett winning. You're like, your idea is more creative and better. Like, I would rather see Miz win. I just, I see them just having Barrett retain, if anything, just because they don't know what they want to do. Like, I don't know who we want to win, so we'll just have Barrett keep it kind of thing. Like, Out of, like, necessity to, to not think of something down the line. Yeah, they don't they don't have any plans, so they don't change anything. It's just the pre-show. So, just, I I feel like there, I've only seen one person win a title on a pre-show, and that was Cesaro from Santino. I just think that Barrett's probably going to keep it just out of past knowledge and stuff. Seems more likely. Yeah, they have a plan. They just don't know what that plan is. <laughs> and, and 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 didn't and like you said, Miz beat him like two weeks ago. So I see Barrett winning. Just... Hmm. Uh, anybody gonna uh, throw anything else out there, or should we move on to the next segment? Yeah, I, I got something. Um, I, since I can't give my predictions tonight, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna be doing during the, each of these particular matches. And during this match, I will be attending the merchandise stand, looking for what's the best T-shirt they have. Hmm. Any, any suggestions? What are the cool t-shirts these days? I have no idea. I think the coolest I'll, wrestling I'll t-shirt I've seen is not even from WWE. It's just a stick figure hitting another stick figure with a chair, and it says heel turn. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy it from, I think it's the heel book Facebook page. It's so good. It's like the best shirt ever. I want it so bad. Anybody else? Any other last thoughts about this? Uh, I'll say... 
they need to really consider about the way they book their talent. Um, that's me, but that's it. That's it, man. Mm. All right, then that's it for part five. Part six, it's time for the tag team championship between Dolph Ziggler and Biggie Langston against Team Hell No coming up right now.